record now. I think. Yes, yeah. Yes, I, I think it's recording now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. So, um, so yeah, as I was saying, I'm Laura Minikowski and I'm an international life and relationship coach. And I coach in English, Spanish, Finnish, and Italian. I was born in Finland, grew up in Venezuela, studied in univer studied university in Boston, then Miami, and now I live in Dublin, Ireland. So I'm a citizen of the world. And um, I love coaching and I love relationship coaching. And um, today I'm gonna be I'm gonna be talking about relationships in general. And then I'm also gonna be talking about um, about dating online and, and doing it in a, in a safe way. So first, before starting to talk about dating online, I want to talk about what you need to do before you date online or before you date online or offline, because all of this applies whether you're dating online or offline. So the most important thing that you need to do is that you need to feel ha like you need to feel good about yourself. You need to feel happy and positive because when you feel good about yourself and when you feel happy and positive, then you're going to attract somebody similar to you, right? If you feel bad and if you feel down, then you'll attract somebody that, that, also, feels, that also feels down. So, um, so yeah, so, you know, in the previous slide, you, you saw the happy couple and I think that that's what we all want. And then in this slide, you see, you see the couple that, um, that's, that's not so happy. So the most important thing is that you need, to, you need to feel complete and fulfilled within yourself. All of these, all of these sayings of, you know, you complete me and, and you're my other half. I mean, I have a real problem with these sayings because, you know, you complete yourself and you fulfill yourself. And when you feel complete and fulfilled within yourself, then you can attract somebody else that's also complete and fulfilled within, the, within themselves as well. <clears throat> and one really important thing to think about is what are the stories that you're telling yourself, that you're telling yourself, right? Because the stories that we tell ourselves define our reality. So what story are you telling yourself about about yourself, about love, about relationships, and about your past. I think, you know, I think that this is, this is a really good exercise for all of you to do, you know, in your, you know, in your own time. Really think about what story you're telling yourself. I mean, if you've gone, you know, if you've gone through a breakup and, you know, most of us have gone through, you know, some kind of um, breakup in our life, you know, you can tell yourself, you can tell yourself different stories about what happened. So one story can be, well, I was in a relationship, I lost the love of my life, and now I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life. Obviously, that's, that's not a good story. Obviously, that's a very negative story, and that story is going to block anyone new coming into your life and, you know, a new love coming into your life. But then on the flip side, you can tell yourself the story, okay, I was, I was in this relationship, I learned a lot in this relationship. And the next, the next relationship will be even better. So obviously that story is a lot more positive and that story is full of, um, full of, of opportunities and, and possibilities. So you can't change what happened in the past, but you can change the story that you're telling yourself about what happened in the past. So, so think about it. Are your stories, are they more positive or are they more negative? And if they are more negative, find a way to turn those stories around. And remember that you always have the power to turn these stories around. Always. So you can experience both sides. You can go from feeling totally devastating, devastated to finding yourself and, um, and love again. And again, like we've, we've probably all gone through some kind of heartbreak, you know, feeling like, you know, total devastation and feeling, you know, very sad. But, you know, with time and with inner work, you know, you can always heal. You can always heal from everything. I know that many times it feels like we're never going to recover from some massive heartbreak, but you will, you will recover no matter how bad, how bad it is. 
so going back to the going back to the stories and the and the recovery so your recovery can be long you know if, if the story that you're telling yourself is very negative or else, you know, if your story is more positive, then you'll recover, um, you'll recover faster. And again, you can change your story at any time. You know, I think that like, a really important thing to remember is that you're always in control. You have, you know, you have to take full responsibility for, for your life and all of your thoughts, your words, and your actions, because all of those things combined will shape your life and, and will shape your relationships as well. So your story can be constructive or it can be destructive. So choose wisely and hopefully, you know, choose a, a more positive story. So what are, what are some ways that you can become more fun and loving now? You can laugh every day. You know, laughing is, is really, really important. And there's so many ways that you can laugh. I mean, you can laugh with your friends. You can watch, you know, funny, silly movies. You know, you can do laughter yoga, even online now. You can, you can dance, even, even if you can't go anywhere to dance, you know, you can dance by yourself in your living room. Um, well, you can go out with your friends, of course, depending on whatever kind of restrictions you have um, where you live. But even if you can't go out with your friends, you can connect with your friends um, over Zoom. And then it's really important to have an attitude of gratitude. You know, it's, it's important to focus on the things that you do have and to, and to be thankful for the things, um, for the things that you do have. Uh, a really good exercise that I give, um, that I give all my clients is that I, I tell them to think about at least three or five things that they're grateful for every day. And it's a great idea to have a gratitude journal. And in this gratitude journal, write down every day, you know, three to five things that you're grateful for. And then when you're having a bad day, you can go back to this journal and then see like, oh, you know, look, look at all the amazing things that I have in my life now. And, you know, even now with, with the crazy situation in the world and all the uncertainty in the world, there's always something to be grateful for. And, you know, you can be grateful for something. You can be grateful for a glass of water and you can be grateful for, you know, a trip that you're going to take you know, once this, um, once this crisis is, um, is over. So yeah, so an attitude of gratitude is, um, is very important. And, you know, when you focus on the things that you're grateful for, you're going to attract more things to be grateful for into your life. If you're always complaining, if you're always, you know, uh, thinking about all the things that you don't have in your life, you're going to attract, you know, that's what you're going to attract. You know, you're not going to attract abundance. You're going to attract more lack into your life. So, so that's a good thing to remember. So um, say nice and positive things to yourself. Become your own best friend. I think that this point is, is really important because many times if things are not going exactly the way that, that we want things to go, you know, we can be very harsh on ourselves and we can beat ourselves up and, you know, say all kinds of horrible things to ourselves. And, um, you know, many times we're, we're our own worst enemies. So it's a lot better to be your own best friend, especially when, when things don't go the way that you think that, that they should go. And again, focus on what you have and not on, on what you don't have. So positive self-talk. This is, this is really important. Um, the only way to change the outside world is changing yourself first. Uh, monitor your self-talk. Is it mostly positive or is it mostly negative? If it's mostly, if it's mostly positive, great. Keep on, you know, keep on saying all the wonderful things that you've been saying to yourself. But if it's mostly negative, find a way to, to turn it around. Because the way that you talk to yourself, you're telling, you're telling the world to talk to you like that and treat you like that, right? So if you're, you know, if you're beating yourself up and saying, you know, I'm not good enough, I'm, I'm not smart enough, I'm not pretty enough, whatever you're saying to yourself, you know, that's the kind of energy that you're putting out into the world and that's the kind of energy that's, that's going to come back to you. So the self-talk is really, really important, you know, and this is something that I work with in my coaching so much. I, 
you know, I have clients that, that come to me and, and say, you know, that, that they want to find a, a relationship and then their, their self-talk is so incredibly negative that, you know, there's, there's no way that, that, that they're going to find a relationship that way by saying all these horrible things to themselves all the time, saying that they're not good enough or pretty enough and all of these negative things. So really think about, think about, um, like you can kind of think about what's the percentage of your positive self-talk and what's the percentage of your negative self-talk. And the, the next time that you, that you start saying something negative to yourself, find a, find a way to turn it around. Like catch yourself before you say that negative thing to yourself and turn it around. And humor is a great way of, of turning, you know, something negative into something, um, in, into something more positive. So remember to be kind and loving towards yourself and put aside the, the harsh criticism and, and judgments. So ways to get more empowered. So self-love and self-acceptance like are at the top of, are at the top of this list. You know, I think that self-love and self-acceptance is something that we all need to work on every single day. I would say that it's the most important thing that we all need to do. And many times it can be, it can be the most difficult thing to do as well. You know, there's, there's a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of people that think, you know, that, that if they love themselves, you know, they're being narcissists or whatever, and it has nothing to do like self-love and self-acceptance doesn't mean that you think that you're better than everyone else. I mean, I know that many times, you know, this can, people think that it has that kind of connotation, but it has, it has nothing to do with the other people. This is about you loving and accepting yourself because the only way that somebody else will love and accept you is by you loving and accepting yourself first. Like all the self, self-love, self-acceptance, self-esteem, all the selves, nobody else can give to you. You're the only one that can give yourself like self-love and, and self-acceptance. So, um, so that's a really, that's a really important, um, that's a really important thing to remember. And a lot of people, you know, uh, think that somebody else will, you know, make them feel loved or somebody else will make them happy. And the truth is that, you know, you have to love yourself and you have to be happy within yourself to then be able to share that with somebody else. And your happiness is your responsibility. It's no one else's responsibility. It's not your partner's responsibility. It's not your parents' responsibility. It's not your friend's responsibility. It's your responsibility 100%. So remember that. Nobody else is going to make you happy. You have to make yourself happy in all ways. So, so yeah. So self-love and self-acceptance, number one. Especially when, especially when you're going through a hard time and especially when, when you do something that you feel that you've done, you know, that things haven't gone the way that you want them to go, then that self-love and that self-acceptance is even more important. Um, exercising, um, getting out of your comfort zone. Um, we tend to be creatures of habit and we tend to do the same things over and over again. So it's a good idea to, to see what you can do differently to get out of your comfort zone. You know, the magic happens outside of your comfort zone. And, and I know that now it can be a bit challenging, you know, in these circumstances. But try to think about different ways that you can get out of your comfort zone. Uh, choose to be around positive people. Have an, ab have an abundant mentality. Have goals. Think positive thoughts. And remember that you can only control yourself. You can't control anybody else. You, you can only control your own thoughts, words, and actions. And then you are your own judge. Um, many times, you know, we judge ourselves a lot harsher than, than other people. And, and I know that there is also this thought or this fear, you know, that, that we think that other people are, are judging us. And, and the truth is that most people are just trying to live their lives the best way that they can. And they don't, you know, they don't have time to sit there and judge you all the time. So, so it's actually, it's actually nice, you know, to not have to worry about that. You know, all these people that you think are judging you, they're not, they're just trying to live their own lives. Um, meditation, chanting, and singing. 
can also be nice taking taking full responsibility for your own life. Positive affirmations in the present tense. When you say something in the present tense, you know you're you're bringing that reality closer to you. So for relationships, the positive affirmation can be, you know, thank you for the thank you for the wonderful relationship that I have. You know, and even if you don't have that relationship now, you know, you're you're stating it as your truth and you're bringing that relationship um, closer to you. Um, have a positive theme song. You know, a great pos a, a great theme song would be the happy song. You know, if you if you're walking down the street singing the happy song, that would definitely be a positive um, theme song. Your body language. Think about what what are you communicating with your body language. You know, when you feel good, you know your your body language reflects it. When you feel bad, you know your body language also also reflects it. The power of your beliefs. Really think about what what your beliefs are, and specifically, what are your beliefs about yourself? about relationships and and about you know men and and about women because all of these beliefs like are are really 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 strong so one exercise that i do with my clients is that you know i tell them to write a list of all these beliefs and and it's amazing how many negative beliefs are in there so if you have a lot of negative beliefs you know that can block a new person from coming into your life and then the law of attraction is, is basically, you know, says that like attracts like. So again, you know, if you, if you want a, a happy and positive person, you need to be that happy and positive person first. You know, the, like the saying that says, become the person that you want to be with. So mirror work. So what matters most is how you see yourself. Um, Louise Hay uh, had this wonderful exercise where she would tell people to look in the mirror and say, I love you to yourself. It sounds silly, but it can be really, really powerful. And, you know, you can do this by yourself. You know, you don't have to do this in front of anybody. But, um, but it's a really powerful exercise to look in the mirror and say, I love you. You know, that would be a good exercise for, you know, for everybody to do and, and see, see how it, um, see how it makes you feel. And, um, you know, like this cat that looks in the mirror and sees and sees a lion, you know, like it's, it's not about looking like a supermodel, but it's about feeling like one. So, um, you know, if you have the confidence, like confidence is, is the most attractive quality that anybody can have is confidence. And the least attractive quality is neediness. So just remember, the more confident you are, the more attractive you're going to be. Like this cat, you know, that, that sees itself as a lion. So before you can let anybody, a new person into your life, you have to let go of the past. And, you know, m many times when relationships end, you know, there's times that we can still be holding on to things from that, from that relationship. So it's really important to let go emotionally, psychologically, and, and physically. Because when we still hold on to the past, there's no room for a new person to come in when we still hold on to the past. So don't let the past haunt you and weigh you down. Um, when you think about the past, you know, this is what happens, like this picture, you know, of, of, a, of a butterfly that's tied to a rock. So it's hard to fly when something is weighing you down. So it's really, really important to, to let go in, in all ways um, of the past. So make peace with the past and forgive. Um, it's important to make peace and forgive everyone in your past, but the most important person to forgive is yourself. Many times it's a lot easier to, to forgive other people and your ex-partner about things. And then, you know, you can still keep on beating yourself up for whatever mistakes you, you think that you made. So it's really, really important to, to be able to forgive yourself and think about all the lessons, you know, that you learned um, in this relationship and how all those lessons will help you move forward and, and have, a, have an even better relationship. So um, happiness comes from within and is found in the present moment by making peace with the past and looking forward to the future. So yeah, so letting go of the past physically. 
So it's good to let go of the physical things from the past, like gifts from your ex, for example. And I'm not saying that you need to let go of all the gifts that you've gotten from your ex, but it depends on how emotionally charged these objects are. I mean, if you still have objects that don't really carry an emotional charge, then you know you don't need to get rid of them. But if you have objects that have a very high emotional charge, then get rid of them, like like a wedding dress and an, and a wedding ring and an engagement ring, like all all of those objects would be very highly emotionally charged. So definitely definitely get rid of of all those kinds of objects. So things will change. Uh, things will only change when you decide that they will change. You know, and sometimes people can hold on to the past for 20 years. Sometimes people can hold on to a relationship and a person forever, like their whole lifetimes. So, um, so it's really, really important to let go. Really important to let go. Because sometimes you're holding on to, to somebody and that person is living their life and the only one that's suffering is, is you. And, and it's blocking your, your own life. All right, so now that we've talked about relationships in general, now we can start talking about dating safely online. So what should you do online? Well, first of all, be yourself. I mean, that's, you know, th that applies whether you're dating online or offline. Just, you know, just be yourself and, and just, yeah, be yourself. There's, you can't be anybody else. So just um, be yourself and, and, and of course, you know, have the belief that you're good enough and that you're worthy of receiving, you know, everything, everything that you want to receive. And I think that that's a, that's a really um, good point to emphasize because many times um, people come to me and, and say that, um, that they want relationships but then they have all of these, you know, negative beliefs and also, you know, issues issues with their self se sense of worth so all of that will block a new relationship from coming so you you need to have all of these things aligned you know you need to have like the intention of wanting a relationship and then you need to have positive beliefs about yourself and and relationships and you need to believe that the type of person that you want to meet also exists because if you don't believe that that type of person exists you're not going to believe you're not going to meet somebody that you don't even believe exists. And then you also need to feel like you're worthy of receiving this relationship as well. So all of those elements have to be working together in order for you to, um, to, to be able to meet somebody. So, so yeah, so be yourself. Post pictures that show who you really are. Don't reveal too much information of, about yourself at the beginning to someone that you just started chatting with. You know, sometimes you can meet somebody and, and then you, you feel like you have like this amazing connection and then you just start telling them your whole life. You know, try to, try to, to keep, uh, like try to keep the mystery alive a bit. Don't, don't reveal too much too soon. Because, I mean, some people may like it, but some people can get scared with that as well. And also with the online world, you can meet so many people at the same time, you know, and of course, that's, that's a challenging aspect about the online world. But, um, but yeah, don't, don't reveal too much uh, too soon. And um, try to keep your feet on the ground and don't start building castles in the sky or romantic fantasies about potential partners. Um, so yeah, just try to keep your feet on the ground as, um, as much as, as much as possible. So potential friends, not soulmates. I think, I think that this is a really important, this is a really important point. Treat everybody that you meet online as a potential friend, not a potential soulmate. You know, you, you'll feel more relaxed if you see them as potential friends. And you'll put less pressure on yourself and anyone that you meet. You know, sometimes you'll become friends and sometimes you'll become more. But the more relaxed you feel, the better everything will flow. You know, and, and again, 
you know, you can meet so many people online and, and if you, you know, every person that you like, if you, if you think that they could potentially be your, you know, future husband or boyfriend or soulmate, you know, that puts way too much pressure on you and it puts way too much pressure on them. So just, so just think of everybody as, as a potential friend and then you'll feel a lot more, a lot more relaxed. Okay, some important things to remember. So the online world is full of many different types of people. You have the people who are genu genuinely looking for a relationship. You have the people that are looking for affairs. You have the people that are looking for one night stands. And then you have the catfish and you have the scammers. So, so yeah, so it's a, it's a crazy world. It's a crazy world filled with many, many kinds of people. So, you know, one thing, I mean, you really have to, you know, you really have to use your, your intuition and try to read between the lines to, to try to decipher what kind of person you're talking to. So how can you tell them apart? So people who are looking for relationships will act more normal and won't try to rush things. They have a genuine interest in getting to know you. They won't tell you crazy extravagant stories. They'll agree to have video calls and they'll send you normal pictures. They'll ask about your interests, your likes, your dislikes, family, hobbies, etc. And then if you're in the same city, they'll invite you for coffee or a drink or dinner. And of course, depend, that's depending on the restrictions, of course. So people who are looking to have affairs, they'll generally tell you upfront what they're looking for. They'll tell you that they're either married or in a relationship. And they'll test you to see if you're interested in having an affair with them. And they can also send inappropriate naked pictures. If you're not interested in having an affair, stop communicating with them immediately. So people who are only looking for sex or one night stands will generally tell you upfront that that's what they're looking for. They just want to have sex. And they'll send inappropriate naked pictures and most of the conversation will be sexual. So the catfish and the scammers, these are the people who pretend to be other people and use other people's pictures. Um, most of the time they're extremely good looking. Many times they use pictures of models and actors. Um, there are many spelling and grammar mistakes in their messages because they're used, they're usually, they're, their English is usually not very good. We'll start telling you very fast that they love you and they wanna spend the rest of their lives with you. And most of the time they're widowed with at least one child. And they'll tell you about this child so that you feel like you have a bond with the child. And many times they say that they're stationed in dangerous places like military personnel. So they use pictures of the military a lot because people tend to trust military figures. So once they feel like they've established some kind of bond with you, they'll say that they had an accident and need some money. Often they ask for small amounts first, like an Amazon gift card. And then if they get that small amount, then they ask for bigger amounts. There are many variations to the things they say that happen to them. They say that they have accidents, they need to have an operation, they got robbed, their child needs medical attention, etc. They can't have video calls and make up all kinds of excuses why they can't have a video call. If they do agree to have a video call, they can put videos up of the person that they, that they are impersonating. You need to be able to have a conversation with them. And then that doesn't happen. And then they blame it on a bad internet connection. So you need, if you, if you can't have like a, a conversation with them on a video call, then you're probably talking to a catfish or, or a scammer. So they are master emotional manipulators. They will say everything to get you emotionally involved with them. In extreme cases, they'll ask you to sign some kind of document saying that you are their fiance and their next of kin. Never sign any kind of documents. And they can use these documents to blackmail you. And if you send naked pictures, they can also blackmail you with these pictures. So never sign any documents or send naked pictures. So how can you, cat how can you catch a catfish or a scammer? If you suspect that you're chatting with a catfish or a scammer, the best way to catch them is by doing a reverse image search on their pictures. You can Google reverse image search and you will get several sites and apps which do reverse image searches. 
you put their picture in and you do the reverse image search and you will get a list of places where that same image has been used. So many times you find the social media accounts of the real person who they're pretending to be. If you get results, then you know that you're talking to a catfish and you can stop communicating with them. Reverse image searches work most of the time, but you can still be talking to a catfish even if you don't get any matching results. Romance scams, a big multi-million business. So romance scams are a very big problem and a multi-million business. Scammers are trained in what to say and they work in groups as well, talking and scamming many people at the same time. Thousands of people worldwide, both women and men, get scammed each year. The scammers are everywhere online, dating sites and social media as well, like Facebook and Instagram. They tend to prey on lonely older people, but anybody can be targeted at any age. So some red flags to watch out for. If someone is telling you extravagant stories with many pieces not adding up, then you're probably talking to a scammer. If they can't have video calls and are always making up different excuses, um, they're recently widowed with one child and they can't have a phone call, then all of these are, are red flags for, um, for scammers. So never do these things online. Never send someone that you haven't met in person any money under any circumstances. Don't send na naked pictures of yourself because they can be used to blackmail you. And never sign any kind of documents from someone that you don't know. So online stories. There are many online stories. You have the happy stories and you have the bad stories. Many happily married people and in relationships met online. So it is possible to meet somebody nice online and have a lasting relationship. Whatever kind of experience you have online will also be influenced by the type of energy that you put out. So always be aware of your own energy and intentions, which is the only thing that you can control. So final thoughts. So whether you're meeting people online or in person, always be aware of your own energy, your intentions, your thoughts, your beliefs, and your expectations. The more aligned you are with yourself and with life in the universe, the more you will start attracting amazing people, events, and circumstances into your life. So vision boards, creating your future. This is an exercise that, that I love doing, that I do with, um, with all my clients. So it's about creating a vision board with images of the life that you would like to create. So you go through magazines and you cut out images that you like. And think about the different areas of your life relationships, self-development, career, travel, hobbies, health, finances, social life, family, fun, and creativity. So think about all these different areas of your life and take a magazine and just start going through the magazine and cut out, um, cut out images, cut out images that you like. And then you can paste these images on a big piece of, um, a big piece of cardboard. And then you're creating a collage of, of like your, of your future perfect life. And then you can, you can put this vision board in a place that you'll see it every day. It's a, um, putting it in your bedroom is a good place because there, there you'll see it every day. And then you can visualize, you can visualize yourself achieving all of these things on this, um, on this vision board. And if you, have, if you have a dream, if you have a goal that you wanna reach, but you don't know how it's gonna happen, it doesn't matter, you don't, you don't need to know because the most important thing is to, is to have the intention of what it is um, that you wanna achieve and to also believe that it's possible <coughs> and that you're worthy of achieving whatever it is that, that you wanna achieve. So, so once, once, all of these, once all of these elements are aligned, the universe will bring people, events, and circumstances into your life that will help you achieve whatever it is um, that you want to achieve. So remember to, um, to dream big and, and do your um, vision board. I actually, um, I, once I had a client that, that did a vision board and she, um, she achieved everything on this vision board in a year you know, which is very fast. It doesn't always happen so fast, but it can happen fast. And she put very big things on this vision board. She put, um, 
she said that she wanted to um, move to a, a new country. She wanted to get a new job. She wanted to buy an apartment. She wanted to get a boyfriend. And everything that she put on this vision board happened um, in a year. So, um, so vision boards are, are very, very powerful. So, so now, you know, now that there's different, that this is a good activity to do, you know, in lockdown or, you know, if you're spending a lot of time at home, you know, creating a vision board is a, is a great activity uh, to do now. All right. And then stay open to magic. Stay open to magic and life surprising you because life is, is full of surprises. And, you know, your whole life can change in one, in one minute. You know, you can, you can meet somebody, you know, you meet somebody and your life changes or you get a new job and your life changes. I mean, the only constant in life is change. And, you know, your, your whole life can change in so many ways in, in one instant. So, um, so I offer coaching sessions in English, Spanish, Finnish, and, and Italian. So um, you can get in touch with me. Um, my email is lauracoaching at gmail.com. And my website is laurarenenkoski.com. So um, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And um, I hope you enjoyed the, the presentation and it gave you um, lots of things to, um, to think about. So um, I'll, stop the, I'll stop the recording now. I'll stop the recording now and then I can take questions.